Hi, it's Dwyer, May 22nd, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've heard you. I've read the comments people feel that I have some personal animus, some hardcore bias against Anthony Joshua, right? They feel that I've been unfair to him. Let me say this too. I recognize Joshua's popularity. I understand that he is probably the most popular heavyweight in the world today, probably the most popular heavyweight of the last several years, right? People fall in love with a fighter. Life is what it is. I'm not going to question Joshua's popularity at all. I admit that I refer to Joshua in videos for a certain fight style or size. Right, most recently in the Vladimir Klitschko Ray Austin video I did recently, where I pointed out that Austin was big like Anthony Joshua, 6'6, and reminded me in some ways of Anthony Joshua. YouTube Nation had a field day in the comment section of that video criticizing me for my lack of fairness. I've heard your comments, right? I'm aware of your comments. But here's what I want people to do. And you could do it simply by looking in my favorites folder here on YouTube. I want you to study the first round. It's the very first round of Vladimir Klitschko's fight against Kubrat Pulev, Anthony Joshua's next opponent. That's a very important round. To me, that's more relevant then the guys who Pulev has fought recently, Rydell Booker, uh, Dinu, uh, understand Kubrat Pulev is 39 years old. He understands that taking a loss right now would be fatal to his career. He wouldn't get another opportunity for what, the next 18 months? And by then, the moment might pass him by. The big payday fights that are out there right now might pass them by. Understand, too, he took step-aside money. To allow Anthony Joshua to fight Andy Ruiz, he's already taken step-aside money. So this is his moment. He's announced that he's not going to take step-aside money. Now, if you look at the first round of the Klitschko fight. And that's a big fight where Pulev gets knocked down several times. What you'll notice is something fascinating. First, Vladimir Klitschko gets hurt early in that fight. He gets hit with a jab and he's in significant trouble. I don't think the announcers announcing the fight understood the trouble that Vladimir Klitschko's in, right? Big time crowd, you have 15,000 people in the stands. Vladimir Klitschko is in danger against Kubrat Pulev of getting blown out in that first round. Understand, somebody is trying to hold. Somebody is trying to clinch. That person is Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko does not want a boxing match to break out. And as it is, he gets caught. He's badly hurt. Now, as I like to say, knockouts cause amnesia. I'll agree. Kubrat Pulev lost that fight. I'll agree. Kubrat Pulev gets knocked down several times in that fight. That's all true. That's all true. He lost the fight. Folks, on my scorecard, Kubrat Pulev lost the fight. Point conceded. But you and I know, boxing has ebbs and flows. 
at the very beginning of the fight, when the guys are 100%. Klitschko's the one who gets hurt first. Klitschko's the one who is holding on. Klitschko's so desperate he's doing Bush League moves like rabbit punching. Kubrat Pulev then clinches. Look at the film. Let me also say this too. Trust me, I'm not a criminal profiler. I'm just pretending to be one here online doing boxing videos. But let's get into the psychology. Who is Kubrat Pulev? Let's try to figure it out from a moment in that first round that almost defies description. Is Kubrat Pulev someone who's lucky to be in the ring with the reigning heavyweight champion? Or is Kubrat Pulev someone who believes he is the heavyweight champion? that he's going to win this fight. That even when bad things happen, he's going to make a comeback. So what I want you to do is to look at a sequence in the first round of the Vladimir klitschko kubrat Pulev fight. Folks, again, it's in my favorites folder. Right? The best education in looking at fights can be found by looking at the fight itself. Vladimir Klitschko on a lead punch. Right? It's a good move by Vladimir Klitschko. He leads with the power shot. Throws a left hand that decks Kubrat Pulev. Pulev, who's unbeaten at the time, is badly hurt. Badly hurt against a heavyweight champ who's a puncher. Pulev hits the canvas hard. Now, here's where the psychology part comes in. Here's where the criminal profiling comes in. We'll call it boxer profiling. I, I don't mean to imply that Kubrat Pulev is a criminal in any way. Pulev gets off the canvas, folks. He can barely stand. It's amazing that referee Tony Weeks, that's right, that Tony Weeks, allows the fight to continue. Pulev gets off the canvas, and Pulev is clearly struggling. What does Pulev do at that moment? He sticks his tongue out at Vladimir Klitschko. He takes one leg off the ground. Has his hands like this, as if to say to Klitschko, and this is a Pulev who can barely stand, as if to say to Klitschko, is that the best you have? That's the guy who's fighting Anthony Joshua, right? Don't look at his last fight against Rydell Booker. Look at that moment. This is a guy who's already beaten Derek Chisora, right? I want people to look at that moment and to understand that Kubrat Pulev firmly believes that he's going to beat Anthony Joshua. This isn't a payday fight for an older fighter. He's 39 years old. This is a guy whose jab is so good. He almost stops Vladimir Klitschko. He has Klitschko badly hurt in the first round. We forget it because Klitschko knocks him down multiple times later in the round and Klitschko knocks him down again later in the fight and Klitschko wins the fight by stoppage. So we forget that Klitschko's in bad shape seconds into the fight. We forget that Klitschko is trying to hold on to Pulev, not vice versa. Now, let me just say, if odds weren't involved, if this was just a Rich, who do you think's going to win the fight type deal? If this were just in the casual world and not the gambling world. If we weren't trying to make a profit on the fight. If I were just here having a conversation on who's going to win. Then I'm going to take the younger guy, the Englishman. Who's going to be fighting in England. <laughs> 
who I've already conceded is probably the most popular heavyweight in the world. I take the young guy who is unbeaten at home, who has sparred with Vladimir Klitschko, who has beaten Vladimir Klitschko professionally. I take Anthony Joshua. Who do I think is more likely than not to win this fight? Anthony Joshua. To the Joshua crowd, let me just say, I expect your guy to win this fight. But folks, odds matter in gambling. Maybe you don't know this, but I'm trying to make this a gambling site. Right? You're getting spectacular odds with Kubrat Pulev, who's not coming for the payday who's actually coming for the title. This is that rare fight where the more rounds it goes, the worse it's going to be for Anthony Joshua. Right? Normally you say 39-year-old, he's fighting an Englishman for the world title in England. Normally you would say, you know, I'm going to go with the younger guy. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go with the guy who's unbeaten in the UK, right? Not this fight. This fight carries a lot of risk. A lot of risk. The bet I'm recommending here, and understand, I think Josh was gonna win the fight. This is a betting play. I want people to make the distinction here. I think Josh was gonna win the fight. What good is that to me at these odds? The bet I'm recommending is to take Kubrat Pulev to win. Folks, you're getting like 5 to 1, 6 to 1. Take Kubrat Pulev to win the fight. Hedged with the under. Right, Joshua is going to have to do some things. Understand, it's desperation that has Vladimir Klitschko lead with the left hook. That catches Pulev in the first round before Pulev has figured out life. Right? In my opinion, Anthony Joshua is going to have to do something like that. Otherwise, panic is going to set in. Pulev has one of the best jabs in the heavyweight division. Pulev is 6'4". If this fight lingers... If Kubrat Pulev gets a lead on Anthony Joshua, and understand what that means, that's like getting a lead on the judges' scorecards in New York City, in Brooklyn, against Deontay Wilder. We know Pulev is entering the ring down two rounds. Right? That's boxing. Right? We know Joshua is the kind of fan favorite where he's losing to Povetkin, and of course they have him in the lead. Right? Popular fighters get breaks. It's not just Anthony Joshua. Obviously, it's Manny Pacquiao, too. If you're loved by fans, if you're a fan favorite, if you're the person who they announced the fight, and by the time you've signed the contract, 20 people have already, 20,000 people have already bought tickets. Right? If you're fighting AJ in the UK, you're down two rounds to none before the first bell sounds, before the opening bell. So understand what happens. If Kubrat Pulev, in a sea of love for Anthony Joshua, who's returned from Saudi Arabia, wherever they fought the Andy Ruiz rematch, to the UK, right? This is a welcoming home bout. Right? If... Anthony Joshua is in front of his fans and he finds himself in the 7th or 8th rounds down to Kubrat Pulev. Folks, there's going to be a lot of anxiety in that building. There are going to be a lot of problems in that building. There are going to be problems in AJ's corner. The storyline's going to change from 
Andy Ruiz got lucky in the third round against AJ, and AJ never fully recovered. Lucky one-punch KO that actually lasted a few rounds there, right? Third round, seventh round. Right, AJ got dazed and <laughs> never fully recovered. That's a fluke. We'll go from that storyline to one where AJ got systematically undressed by one of the best jabbers in the heavyweight division, whose jab is like a two-by-four. It's like a strong punch. Right, just ask yourself, who collapses the pocket better? AJ, who I view as cautious, or Derek Chisora? Understand how good Pulev's jab is. He beat Chisora. Now I know some people are going to say, hey, one judge had it close. Look, that's right, one judge. Right, I believe that fight may have been a split decision or something like that. Hey, two of the three judges didn't believe it was that close. Pulev has dealt with guys collapsing the pocket. Guys who want to fight him on the inside. You and I know that's not AJ. Is AJ going to pull a Vladimir Klitschko? And again, I keep telling people, Vladimir Klitschko went through a lot of adversity to become the fighter he was. Right? Changed trainers along the way. Blown out multiple fights. Right? Vladimir Klitschko evolved. Vladimir Klitschko had to learn certain things. When you look at the Vladimir Klitschko pull that fight, and again, I'm just encouraging people to look at the first round. Look at the whole fight if you want to. But the first round tells the whole story. You're going to notice that there's a lot to Klitschko's game between punches. Where he's roughing you up, he's hitting you behind the head, he's leaning on you, he's trying to you know, use his upper body and size to wilt you between punches. There's a George Foreman element to Klitschko's game that's still developing in Anthony Joshua. Right, Klitschko himself didn't have that part of his game when he was a young fighter. If those parts of Joshua's game aren't as developed as Klitschko's game, and if Joshua finds himself surprised by Pulev's jab, like Klitschko was. And if Joshua doesn't have a way to defuse it, and if he isn't the kind of risk-taking fighter to lead with power shots, if this fight makes it to the later rounds, there's going to be anxiety in the United Kingdom. <laughs> Right, understand, there reaches a point where even judges who know who the favorite is, who had to fight two rounds to none early, will say, you know what? <laughs> the underdog here has controlled the fight to such an extent that I can't wreck my reputation, regardless of who the crowd's yelling for. I can't wreck my reputation by not recognizing the challenger. So yes, if I were just asked who wins this fight, I'd say, I'd say Anthony Joshua. Perhaps by KO, under the kind of scenario where he beat Pravetkin, right? Makes some adjustments, gets the KO in the middle rounds. That to me is probably the most likely scenario. The way I'm going to play this fight, though, is I'm going to take Kubrat Pulev to win the fight. Right? Why? Because he's the older, more experienced fighter. Because he got off the canvas when he could barely stand and stuck his tongue out at Vladimir Klitschko. He believed at that moment that he was the better man. That, okay, you got me. By the way, it's in round one. Okay, you got me. I'm still here. Has his hands wide like this. Read body language. Lifts one leg off the canvas to show Klitschko, hey, look, I still have my balance. Right? This is in a round where he badly hurt Klitschko earlier in the round off one of the first jabs he throws. Has Klitschko hugging him 
as if they're dancing. Right? Kubrat Pulev doesn't want to step aside because Kubrat Pulev believes he's the next heavyweight champion. A guy like this at 39 who knows that these chances don't come around but once every 18 months if you're lucky. A guy who's already beaten Yui Fury, who's already beaten Derek Chisora, who's already fought for the heavyweight title and has already been before a sellout crowd against a consensus champion. Right? That guy's a damn dangerous opponent. Especially when it wasn't so long ago that AJ got dropped a number of times by Andy Ruiz. Right? This is a dangerous fight. Let's stop kidding ourselves. Pulev has been around Pulev's jab, an argument can be made against the blessed puncher, might be the best punch of this fight. I'll agree, AJ hits hard with both hands. I'll agree, the Andy Ruiz fight, he has Andy down on the canvas, which is an accomplishment if you look at Andy's career. I'll agree, AJ hits tough. Alexander Povetkin didn't look like that against Vladimir Klitschko. Against AJ, it looks like he's in a car crash and his body is rolled out the vehicle afterwards, right? He's finished. I'm just telling you, if this fight isn't fast-paced, if it has a lot of slow rounds, and understand, AJ's a cautious fighter, if it has a lot of slow rounds, and comes down to timing and spacing. The punch that's going to rule the day is Pulev's jab. For betting purposes, to get a return, to beat the casino, to make money, the bet I'm recommending is the underdog, Kubrat Pulev, to win the fight, hedged with the under. In other words, if AJ KOs Kubrat Pulev early, more beer for us, right? We'll say, okay, the hedge held, at a minimum, the hedge held, I'll live for another day, right? Some people will have lost money in the casino, wouldn't be you, right? If Kubrat Pulev wins the fight by decision, if everyone else is shocked, you're thinking to yourself, cha-ching, right? Okay, fine, and of course, if lightning strikes, if Pulev hurts AJ like he hurts Vladimir Klitschko early in the first round of their fight, if AJ, who's more of a puncher than a boxer, finds himself getting hit with Pulev's jabs, gets dazed, right, gets confused, gets dropped, early, then you win both halves of the play. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I want to hear in particular from the AJ crowd because I understand what we're dealing with here. Right? We're dealing with a very popular young champ who inspires loyalty. I get it. I've heard from folks who claim that Deontay Wilder was offered $120 million to fight under the zone and that he didn't uh, take the contract because he didn't want to face AJ, right? As if that $120 million was just for one fight against AJ, right? Okay, whatever, right? I understand there's a narrative out there, right? That AJ is a great fighter who we're just overlooking, right? That narrative includes the idea that AJ wasn't supposed to fight Andy Ruiz, um, Andy's a last-minute replacement, uh, had AJ been prepared, that fight could have been different, uh, that the rematch wasn't about Andy gaining weight and being slow afoot, that AJ showed he has a back foot in the rematch, and that AJ is an Olympic gold medalist who is unified today. 
who isn't getting the attention he deserves. Uh, Wilder and Fury are fighting each other. Neither wants to fight AJ. Okay, I've heard it all. Let me hear from you on this fight. Right? If you feel there's a dynamic that I'm overlooking here, if you feel that this fight is clear-cut, call your winner, call your round, tell us how this fight's going to go forward. Understand, this fight has huge implications. Right? Huge. Should AJ lose this fight to Kubrat Pulev, then Pulev would have a lot of power in the heavyweight division. Right? But what it would mean would be that Tyson Fury, should he beat Wilder in the third fight, wouldn't have to fight AJ, right, to have status among the current crop of heavyweights. Understand, Fury's already beaten Vladimir Klitschko. He's already beaten Deontay Wilder, right? He beats Klitschko when Klitschko was champion. He's the only current heavyweight champion to be able to say that. Right? Also, the arguments that he's, you know, whether or not Tyson Fury is delineal have been rendered irrelevant because he is the only man to beat WBC, former champion Deontay Wilder. So AJ's only lost once. Right? As long as AJ doesn't lose again, there's going to be an outcry. We're going to say who owns this era? Fury or Anthony Joshua will overlook the fact that Joshua hasn't fought Deontay Wilder. You lose all that if AJ suffers a second loss, especially if that loss is in the United Kingdom. Right? So let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.